Okay, I'm going to work on another painting today. This is uh, of Zion National Park. This is a cliff called the Great White Throne, one of the more prominent places in the park. And uh, this is from part way up Angel's Landing Trail, one of the more significant and exciting trails in the park too. But from part way up, we can look across the canyon and see the Great White Throne. This is a little photograph that I've taken uh, of, of that area. And I'm gonna add uh, some of my own creative license into it. I'm gonna um, build some clouds that, that come down into this area right here. I'm gonna make a little more stormy sky and let some clouds drift across into this area. I've changed the lighting up in here by using a, a charcoal pencil. Uh, and then I'll do a little bit of uh, adjusting with a, either a dark pencil or a light pencil. And I've kind of changed the values on this cliff to make this a little more dynamic coming back into this area here and especially this area right up in there. So what I'll do uh, now after I've, I've, I've done a careful plan and taken some, some time to work on this, I'll just tape both of these right up here. Um, adjacent to my um, my painting surface. This is a 140 pound arches, 11 by 15 size, and I'm using uh, Daniel Smith paints over here and a variety of brushes that I'll, I'll show you as we go on. I'm going to do some things that uh, maybe aren't in the photograph. And as you begin your own paintings, you you, you kind of lock yourself into that photograph. Say, if I can replicate this photograph, this will be a good painting. That's usually not the case. Usually you'll have to, to do some design work, make it more uh, dramatic than, than what it is, or at least as dramatic as what you saw when you were there. But we don't want to lock into the, the photographs because they kind of lie to us and they don't give us enough anyway. So use your own artistic skills and, and uh, let the juices flow as you work on these paintings. And that's what I'm hoping to do here. Now, there's some risk to that, of course, but that's what makes it exciting and makes it fun. So it's well worth the risk. So I'm going to, I've got my palette all cleared out here. And I'm going to move into this painting. Now, I've got just a little bit of, of the outline sketch done. Of, uh, I've, I've gone very, very light with this up, up here. And you can barely see it from where you are. But I'm going to just darken in where this cliff kind of comes out. This foreground cliff right here. Um, I'm going to have it be dark up in this area. And then uh, I'll, I'll leave a little bit of detail on this perimeter where the light's hitting right up in here. And uh, you can see that, that just the lines that I've left here are going to give me a, a, a diagram of where, where my edges will be. That's the only reason you need to put a line on this watercolor paper is if there's going to be an edge, then you can control that. I'm going to take my half inch brush right now and I'm going to um, wet this sky area. Now I'll go ahead and define this edge right here. And this is going to be darker over there. I'm going to bring some water up in this area as well. Wherever I put uh, pigment now it's going to run in those areas and wherever I don't put it it's going to stay light. Now I'm going to let this come right up to this edge and I'll have some light that will break through there and I'll bring this down into here and now I'm going to create an interesting sky by starting first with some yellow up in there. This would be kind of a stormy sky, but I'm going to create those grays in this sky by using uh, yellow, red, and blue. I'm going to use a little bit of... Uh, um, this is yellow ochre, and I'm going to top that with cadmium red light and let those pig pigments kind of blend and push each other around a little bit up there. I'll bring some in here, be very loose with that as it comes down into these cloud shapes. And then I'll come over here, pick up some ultramarine blue, and I'm going to put that blue on top of these 
uh, pigments that I've, I've put in here in this wash. What's going to ha happen is this blue is going to crawl into and mix with the yellow and the red. And of course, yellow, red, and blue together is going to make kind of a gray. Well, there are certain times when we want that, and this is one of those times. I want to see a gray. Okay, I think I'll leave that little bit of light right in there. I'll come over here. And now these are cloud shapes that are going to wrap around and come across the front of this mountain and drift down into and behind this cliff. This is the great white throne behind. And now I'm going to let that just crawl around and move and soften these edges by touching some clear water up into here and letting these edges just fall away. Now stay away from this edge because it's going to be light. So I'll just let all this come down into here and let those pigments just bleed down into there. I'm uh, just trying to decide whether to leave that little flick of light and I want to. Now, since this uh, down in here, it's a cliff, but it's called the Great White Throne for a reason. It uh, has some areas of uh, quite light lights in it, and, and that's just the way that the, the stonework is on it. But what we're going to do right now is create just a little bit of that value. It needs to be much darker, but we don't want to get there yet. We want to just keep the keep away from those edges and keep these whites where we want them, right up in here. See, we have all this light coming down in there. And um, I'll bring in a few little yellows right in here. And I want... Notice how I've got some blues, some reds, some yellows. I want these pigments to mingle together. Even though I'm going to come in with a much darker dark in here in just a minute, I still want to get this variety of color in here because what I'm doing now is I'm working on the lightest lights. The lightest lights on this cliff are going to be right here. Okay. Now that's my lightest light and it's also turning as it gets warmer down in here. While that's drying down a little bit, I'll come and throw some more color into that. Now if the pigment forms um, a, a little, um, just a little lip like this along this edge or what we call a bead, if it starts to, to settle the pigment in that, just pick up your board like this and turn it back the other way and let the pigment run away from this edge. Let some of these pigments run around a little bit and just let it do its own thing. But you can always move these boards around. But I'm just going to let that kind of dry down now while it's while it's doing that. I'm going to bring some of these yellows down in here and some of these beiges that are happening up in this area. I'm just going to get those in there. And you say, well, gosh, look how bold he is. Yeah, that's right. This is the place to do that. Right at the start, get some of those warms in where we're going to need it. Let's, we're going to have some yellows down in here so I can get those in there now as well. And get some of these areas where there's not going to be any white. Let's don't leave any there. Let's just get all these light values down in this area. Get those laid in. I'm going to have a little touch of, of green in this area as well. So I'm going to get that in here. Very bold strokes. And this is how a painting begins. You get some pigment where you're going to need the pigment. Get your lightest lights in there. And that's that we're going to... Um, Use to create our, um, our light light values. Get those laid in there. Okay, so 
Now I'm going to get the, these colors in on this side and I'm going to kind of stay away from this edge but I don't care about it too much because my dark edge is going to be formed when I get these really dark darks down into there. Mainly I just want to get rid of these whites that are here and turn it into a value that's going to be comfortable for me. There we go. Now isn't that nice? Now, so we've got our lightest values in here and we start to move away from those lights except where we're going to really want uh, that sparkle to be. And now as these start to dry down, we have the basis of our lightest larks. We say, well, what about those dark darks in here and here and here and here? Well, they'll go over the top. In watercolor, we have to work from light to dark. So we lay down all these light values. The first 10 or 15 minutes, we've got a lot done on these paintings. And that's the way it should be. Okay, and, but then we come back in and we lay in those dark values over the top as we go and begin to build this up. And uh, the first part of your painting doesn't take very much time at all. But the uh, adding the detail to it and the darker darks and building it up as you go, that takes more time. Now what we'll do right now is we'll we'll build this up to a certain point and then I'll, I'll set it aside to dry and then we'll come back to it. And what I like to do is kind of clean these edges uh, as it begins to dry off a little bit. I have artist tape on the edge and and so as I just pull this along it makes a nice clean edge and doesn't look so messy. And um, it doesn't allow this pigment that's on the outside rim here to run back into the into the wash and disturb it. But what we have right now is what watercolor is, is good at. Very, very, very nice uh, colors and soft edges and a nice blending of pigments together. And, and that's what watercolor is all about. But we'll let this dry down now, give it a little time, and then we'll come back to it in a minute. Now as I continue working on this um, great white throne, the mountain up here, I'm using a grays, uh, warm grays right now, but I've got to be careful because this cloud is going to come down through here. So I want to wet this area out into here and let this mountain just kind of fade out into that. I want all this to just be a nice soft transition from this mountain down into this cloud. So I've got to keep some water down into here. That's not a problem. I'll just lay it over the top of this for now. And the areas that I'm working on will just bleed into that and it won't cause me any problems at all. So I'll just continue to work up in here on some of these areas on this great white throne. I have a little bit of detail in here and not a lot because I'm speeding off in the distance. Then I'll soften some outside edges here. Just soften those by adding clear water. There, now I've got where it kind of turns a little bit. We still want there to be a to be light, but this is going to start to be quite dark as it gets down into here. So we'll start to bring this into kind of a bluish purple, but we want to create that with a variety of colors in here. We want it just to come down and disappear into this cloud shape. I'm going to have a nice hard edge here. this is soften up into this cloud and then continue to bring my blues and this is the shadow part now of this great white throne coming down into here 
and I need it to get quite dark as it approaches this edge and you see that now as I'm coming up against this edge that pencil line that I had there is disappearing okay and I'm just going to bring this right up to the edge all the way down I'm going to add a little bit of uh, yellow in there and just to create some variety as we get down into these darker passages and I'm going to preserve some places where there might be some white trees sticking up against that so I'm just going to soften this edge right down here and then go ahead and bring these darks Again, using a variety of blues, reds, yellows. I need to get my darks down in here, but I need to do it in a variety of color to create the drama that I need. This is still a little wet up in this area, so. this edge as it comes up right there a little bit of highlight on that part of the cliff that we're seeing right in this area and then I'll straighten this out and come right out to this edge with these darks soften this one this one. Okay, now that's a good start on that. I'll get a little splattering here to create some textural areas, not too much. And now we'll let that dry down as we begin to come and work over in this area. And um, we'll see how we continue to shape this. I'd like to see a little corner of this. Um, let's see how wet that is. A little corner of that great white throne come out right about here to help identify the shape of it. I'll have that come out right through that cloud shape that's coming down through here. We can see that cloud just running right down into it. some of these edges a little bit and then I'll come and start working over here. Now let's bring some some warms. I have the yellows. And we'll also have some 
some blue in there, but let's mix some blue out in this area. But mainly we'll stay in the warms now as we work up into this area up in here. And I'm going to create some texture by scumbling with my brush. Scumbling is using this side of the, the brush back up in here rather than the point and bringing some, leaving some, uh, what they call this dry brush, but um, of course the brush is wet, but they call it dry brush and it just means that what we're doing is we're using just a corner of that brush to create the, um, these little shapes against the texture of the paper. So I'm going to go ahead and get a little of that in there. Darken up right over here using the side of that brush to really create a some of these textural effects that we're going to need of these rocks as they come up and around. It's just kind of a base. And then after that dries, we'll go ahead and do the rest of the darks, these dark shadows. But see how that already creates a, a sense of that there's texture and things going on in there that uh, would be perhaps interesting, little rocks and fissures and so forth on there. Okay, and I'll continue to... Work up some of these really dark darks that are going to be over on this side. down in this area here it, it's a form shadow so it's going to be warm uh, quite wrong but this is a this is a major uh, shadow area I'm going to lay this in quickly touch a little bit of purple as it comes down towards the bottom and this will end with some leaves down here, so I'll go ahead and let that come into it now and do the rest of this right out to this edge. Now I'm going to hurry and come right up here on these edges that come out over the top and I'll touch some water out here and help those corners turn just a little bit. Same thing here.
right up here on this edge, right where it turns, always a little bit darker. So I'm going to get some of these darks over here on this side and start to lay those in now. And at the same time that I'm bringing them down, now I'm going to leave the negative shapes of this foliage from this tree. sticking out as well but we want to use the dark as it comes down to start to shape some of these leaves in here so this is our, our negative painting it means we're going to paint the darks to reveal the lights and I'm going to actually leave a few little um, leaf shapes with my negative painting as well going right around here and down along this bottom edge. I'm going to drop clear down into this area here. Okay, so I'm going to leave some of these little, few little branch shapes as well as some leaf shapes. See the whole thing starting to come into play now. You can see how important this negative painting is, and all of a sudden just makes these uh, shrubs just jump out towards us. And uh, that's good, that's what we want. I think I'll go ahead and touch some of my uh, greens and yellows down here in this area. in loosely along this bottom part. Yes. 
Watch this area. It's going to be a lot darker, so I'm going to just drop some darker greens into this right now. And start to build up some of that foliage right in here. Same thing down in there. I may as well just drop a few little darks down in there right now. Because they're going to be here. Down in this corner. I'll loosely lay them in. Starks do along the bottom is just kind of give the whole thing a base to set on. So I'm going to let those darks just kind of work their way down and at the same time I'll go ahead and leave a few little branches in here that we might need in a minute to add some detail in the foreground. Okay, and then I'll leave this area alone and come back to it later. But right now we want to just continue to, to uh, bring everything into focus. I like the way this is falling down into here, but that mountain needs to be uh, darker yet to really give it the strength that it needs and the power. So as this dries down, we'll do the same thing. Wet the areas where we want to have a soft edge and leave dry the areas where we want it to be very, very hard. It's very dark until it hits the water. Again, I'm getting my grays using a variety of color in here. Mostly blue, but uh, letting some other colors mix into it. And anything I put on it now, after I've got this initial glaze here, it's going to darken it up quite quickly. So let's let this kind of fade out. this distinct cloud coming in so we don't want any hard edges right there. Let's go ahead and continue to darken this right up there. You can see the sheen on the because I have so much water up in there and as I drop this into it, it's all starting to run here. So what I'll do is I'll just tip it back like this and or even over this way to allow that pigment to run back in because it's quite wet. If I needed to do it a lot, I'd just turn it around like this and let all this run back into that wash. But while I still got a bead here, I'm going to keep coming this bottom area down into here. Once again, looking for my darks as I come down against the bottom so that this, this will add to our drama.
So just continue to uh, work on some of these areas, darkening up the areas that need to be darker and um, just kind of refining the detail a little bit. As you can see, it's just starting to look a little more realistic as we work into this. And um, It'll take some time, but this is the part of the painting that just kind of slows down. and. Um, just kind of being careful with some of these edges. Notice how we have some streaks that come down. Uh, we want to feel those streaks of, of that varnish that come down these rocks and fall down into it. So I'm just adding a few of those as we go now and um, shaping some of the, the cracks. Um, and the fissures in the rock as they come around. I'm being careful to, to keep the flow going this way around, make it look like the rocks can go around this area here. And I'll just continue to work on that for a little while now and um, keep things going. again allowing these this varnish to just kind of run down give the feeling of these streaks that are that are always in these rocks we don't have to get them exactly where they are um, the viewer will get the idea So now I'm bringing the, this cloud that's coming across the front. It's going to cast a shadow on this foreground rock. It's not there in our photograph, but I'm going to add it. So I'm getting that little shadow in here now. 
which is kind of darkening up this area. And I needed that in my composition. I'm just going to leave a nice kind of a firm shadow here that will look like it's it's coming from this cloud. Um, and I might have to soften that up just slightly and then bring this down over here. That picks up the light where we wanted it here. And, and then uh, dancing down into these trees here. So I think that's working well. Now these trees right here, I'm going to allow for some foliage to... If you can, I don't know if you can see the, where I'm drawing it in or not, but I'm going to create some uh, some dark and light areas down within the foliage here, doing some negative painting. Let me just um, start that right in here. And this will help to um, create some interest in the foliage area. This is very important to have some things going on within the foliage, not just one big panel, but where we can look up through it like we're doing back up in here, here, and here. So I'm going to work on a few of those areas and then uh, I'll come back to these and I'll darken up on these trunks underneath so it looks like this foliage comes out forward. But this is an area where we would have some detail. Okay, I'll take some clear water and soften the top of this. Keep the lights on this side because that's where the sunlight's coming from. But go ahead and pull some darks over on this side of the foliage, away from the light, and that's fine. That's where it belongs. Now as we soften these outside edges and pull them away, we start to see the, this branch structure. Instead of seeing uh, these little dark shapes, now we start to see that. And I'll have a little bit more down in here. Once again, changing the color slightly as we I want to have that variety of, of color in there in our shrubbery. We don't want to have just one, one color, especially green. If you're going to use green, boy, you're going to have some variety in there. Okay, now let's soften some of these. little bits of light branch structure and leaf structure really really add to the detail. Um, it makes it feel like what we see in nature. We really see all those lights. We've got to keep this light and we've got light here, here, and here. So here, here, and here. Um, and we want to keep, keep it that way. Keep keep uh, working on it, but make sure anything we do stays over on the shadow side as it turns over here. This should be darker and it should get light as it turns over to this side. And I'll grab a little bit of yellow, keep that variety going, and then I'll soften this edge out here. With the feeling that it's it's turning, it's coming around this direction, and we'll continue to adjust that as we go. But that's good for now. Now I'm going to do the same thing down in here. I'm going to have some foliage that comes down, and 
wraps around this side and touches to the bottom. What we're doing now with these darks is shaping the, the light side of this tree over there. Bread into here to, to soften these, these uh, kind of strong greens that are happening now and there. Now we'll get some red into it and that will balance it nicely, make it feel a lot more comfortable. We always got to introduce a, uh, some reds in when we've got all these greens going on, plus, we've got the reds coming in behind the shrubbery as it comes out. Okay, as we move on to the second day of this painting, we're going to um, begin to add some detail here and there and just refine the shapes. We've got the basic values in there and I'm comfortable with that. But this part takes almost as much time for me as the, the whole painting up to this point did. And so, um, you know, it may get a little tedious, but uh, I'll move along quickly here on this and maybe and invite you to come along as I do so. Now once again I'm going to bring my yellow ochre, cadmium red light, and these are the colors that I've used up here already in this area. And uh, I'm going to um, have an area right in here that needs to be softened slightly. So I'm going to take a, a, one of my Viva paper towels right here and fold that up. And I'm going to soften this edge right here because I need to have that come down and, and approach this right up there and touch against that edge. Now, I'm just going to take away this hard edge that's right up there. Okay, I'll just take that away a little bit and then I'll just lift that slightly. And so it isn't such a harsh edge. And after that dries, I'll add a little bit of water to it and, and uh, just come up against this edge just slightly. And I've got to be cautious with that. Let that dry down slightly. And then, once again, I'll use a little bit of the the pink that matches this in here. And I'm going to just let that fall down into this area and bleed this back into this shape. And if I do it carefully, I think the viewer will will be comfortable enough with it. Now I'd like to see this edge refined just slightly down in here as well. So I'll tighten that up and soften this as it comes back into the sky area and let it blend back. Now it's not an area where I want to draw attention to, but I want to reshape that cliff so it works right because this shadow has to come clear up here for me to uh, get this correct as it is here. I need to just redefine that a little bit. And uh, so we'll let that dry before we do anything else uh, additional with that. And then I've got a distant cliff that's going to come in here that's going to work its way uh, work its way uh, behind this great white throne. I'm going to exaggerate that shape a little bit, put it in blue once again to try to give the idea that that cliff is back behind it. 
But what it also does at this point is it redefines the shape of this and makes that part stand out a little stronger. And I need for it to do that. Now I'm just going to gray it back with a little bit of red. This is cadmium red light. It works well with ultramarine blue to make a gray. And I don't want it to be too strong. I don't want it to compete uh, with any of the blues anywhere else. But I want it to be there. So notice how that brings this part forward now. This area right here. Okay, let's keep plowing along with this. I'm going to redefine some of the shapes uh, with just uh, really as it turns up in here. This is white so that the, the shadow really needs to be kind of a, a bluish once again. And I'll come right out here to this point. Stay away from that because I don't want it to bleed up into the sky. Looks like it's wanting to do that already. And then I'll bring this blue down into this area. And this is where it turns the corner. But it kind of turns softly, as you can see up in here. And we have a little bit of that blue that comes up through there. I'm going to bring that down and define this edge. And bring this right up to this little hump that's right here. I'll bring that right up to it. And a little touch of gray once again down into here. I'm just shaping as this cliff turns. I'll soften that side and that side. And begin to work my way down into some of these other areas that need some attention. And just add a little bit of detail here and there as we're coming and working our way down this, this cliff here. And we'll add a few add a few shapes as we're going along here and just a little bit of detail here and there and then we'll keep working on down this and finish up some of these areas that we're working on down here these are where the trees are so we'll just get a little bit more greenish in on that and shape those and we're getting pretty close on this to, to being done. I'm going to work a little bit down here on these uh, uh, down below in this area, right down in here, and build some shapes and uh, down there, a little more detail down in the, in the foliage area. So I'll work on that now and keep moving. This is positive painting now as opposed to negative, where I have a light area, so I'm bringing the darks out across that. Down in here, I've got a dark area, so I'm leaving the lights down in here. And just finishing that off. Okay. Touching up just a few of these little areas down in the bottom, and we're getting close. Just going to shape a few of these a little bit darker red here. This is a little bit of negative painting again back in here, just finalizing and finishing off these little areas. And you know, I have to be careful that I don't just keep going on forever with this, but um, there comes a point in the painting where you say, you know what, it looks pretty good the way it is. And I keep coming back uh, and, and messing with it just a little bit, but it doesn't really change the image. It just uh, changes the detail slightly, and I'm pretty close to being done. I thought I was done already, but then each time I come back with my my paints and brushes, I want to work on it a little bit more. 
Well, as we uh, come to the conclusion of this painting, there comes a time when you just kind of need to say, all right, that's enough, stop. And one of the ways I, I like to do that is to grab a, a trial mat like this, just a, a loose mat that I have laying around and, and, and put it on the, the painting itself and say, gosh, what have I got here? How, how is, this, uh, is this looking? So I'll slip that on here. And I'm pretty happy with it. I love how the clouds come down into here and the cast shadow that comes across. I feel pretty comfortable with the negative painting that's happening up in this area. And we finished off with a little positive branches coming out on this side. And, um, you know, I feel, I feel pretty good about it. And I appreciate you sticking with me through this painting. It's always fun to paint Zion. Uh, I love painting Zion. It's, it's the coolest thing ever. And um, if you if you get a chance to get up in the national parks or any of the parks where you are, uh, just enjoy what's there. It's been given to us by our our uh, ancestors, and we have a, a obligation to protect those parks for the future generations as well. And one of the ways I like to do that is by using it by painting up there by sharing the, the joy that I have in the national parks and just just keeping that going. So an experience like this that we had up in the national park uh, at Zion and with the clouds just drifting through the cliffs and that, what a great experience. When an artist feels those things and has those kinds of experiences, it's a great joy to come down and, and present that to you in a, in a painting like this and uh, just kind of re-enjoy it again and hopefully someone else will come along and I'll buy this painting, put it in their office or home and they can continue to enjoy it like we do. Well thanks for joining me. This has been a fun painting. I appreciate you being here and, and I hope to see you again soon. Thanks for being here. This is Roland Lee.